Welcome uh, one more time to Make Masters with uh, Daniel here again. Welcome. So uh, today I am basically speaking as one of you, uh, but my day job is solution architect, but after work I am also integration partner. And the fun fact is that I was integration partner before I actually joined Make. And during those times, I've built a product, a software product with my colleague who is a developer and I'm no developer at all, right? And, uh, you know, when we were building this product, we were thinking about setting up our infrastructure, right? How do we keep the cost low? How do we make all the business operations as streamlined as possible so we don't have to like build license server and uh, buy emailing solutions to send notification, etc. you know, all that stuff, which is uh, related to software product. And I was like, we just build it with make, right? Or back then it was Integromat. And so we did. So for the product, which I will show you in a bit, uh, we basically had to only code the core features, like, you know, the, the that thing, which is generating the value for the users, but all the stuff like uh, license management, um, fail notifications when the product doesn't work, uh, purchasing, invoicing, you know, reporting, all that, we build that on make. So we basically minimize all the costs, right? So it's fair to say right now that running that product monthly costs me like $15. And I'm not really kidding. Like it, it, it's as low as that. So Let's take a sneak peek uh, at the product, what it is. I'm not going to go into details because it, it really doesn't matter. Like you are here for the scenarios and for the workflow, right? But I still kind of need to show you what it does. So uh, let's say you are working in uh, Google Sheets and you want to pass the sample data to BigQuery, which is like online database or online warehouse from, uh, from Google. Where you, can run, where you can run SQL and you can run joints and appends, et cetera. And you know, we, we saw a gap on the market and there was not really an efficient way to do it from Google Sheets. So we were like, hey, let's just build it ourselves because we are using this process over and over and we just made a product for that and ma made it public. And so when you are as, as a user uh, in Google Sheets and you want to push that data to BigQuery, you will likely go to extensions and you will look for add-ons and then you will get to you will get to the app store and then you will likely start looking for BigQuery. And here's our product, right? Actually, we have two products, you know, maybe I should say that too. So we have uploader, which basically allows you to upload the data from to BigQuery. And then we have another product, which is newer, which was released this year, which is downloading data from BigQuery to Google Sheets. So the, the circle is complete. And you know, as a user, if you are looking just to upload, you will go to the App Store, you will open up the product, you know, you will maybe read the descriptions. And then, you know, if I had not installed it yet, that the, there would be install button, big blue, you click it, you go through a few wizards and the product is installed for you. And now that's where the cool stuff in Make starts. So whenever users end up with installed product, and they start interacting it with it, uh, we need to start solving the licensing problem, right? Because the, the, the software or the add-on has uh, two modes, right? You are either valid user or not valid user because you, are, you have to pay us or you are in trial to be valid or you are expired and you cannot use the product. And we need to somehow manage this licensing problem, right? Like who is valid, who, who can use the product and who cannot? So the moment you start uh, interacting with the product for the first time, we uh, send an event with your ID and with your email to our license server. And you know, we check whether you are an existing user, if you are a new user, et cetera. And you know, I'm saying license server, but it's, it's super simple. Like it's a, it's a Google Sheet <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna show you how it looks. So whenever, uh, whenever we see a new user, we basically take the user and add it to this uh, spreadsheet. Obviously it's anonymized for, for the purposes of the webinar, but you know, normally you will see all emails here, all IDs, et cetera. And this is where we store um, 
the ID email and then first team day, trial expiration date, you know, license start date, et cetera. And this is basically our, our core uh, for deciding whether you are okay user or not and how we communicated the product. And I will show you a scenario which is dealing with this. So for example, if I start as a new user, you know, I will, I will have okay trial uh, status here. And then, you know, we pass this trial, this status back to, back to the product. So the product allows you to be actually used. And if you are on the other hand, expired trial or license, you know, the product will show you a, a fail message and it will tell you that uh, you should, you should get uh, a, a paid license. And so all the scenarios I'll be talking about are not that fancy, you know, they're pretty straightforward, but when you combine them all together, uh, you are basically minimizing all the manual work. So when we look at that uh, licensing uh, scenario, there are basically two things which can happen. So let's let's load it up and see what's happening there. I can actually open up a sample execution here. And all I'm showing is like production stuff, like as it runs, this is it. Like there are no edits, this is this is real stuff. And basically here uh, we have this big scenario, but this upper route is basically inactive for some time. So we don't have to worry about it. But when you start interacting with the product or when you try to upload the data, we sent a webhook payload to make URL, right? So it's custom webhook module where we receive the data and there is some action, you know, this one was for example, status check. So it's an existing user. And then, you know, with make, we figure out whether Steve actually has a valid license or not. Uh, and as I speak, you know, we do this, we, this one scenario is covering it for two products. So I know because I know this stuff, I know that uh, there is no product name here, but if it was about product downloader, I would have the product name here. Since it's missing here, I know it's uploader and we added the downloader product later, as I already mentioned. So this one, I know it's for downloader. Uh, so, I go in my spreadsheet, you know, and I check that email and I try to list this in, in the list or I, I search for that email in the list of users here to retrieve the calculated status in this column, right? And then the user is either expired or he's okay if it's an existing user. So this is what's happening in this second route, right? It's, it's very simple, you know, you, you look up the status, and then we get the status and reply back to the product and say, you know, okay user or not okay user by sending basically the trial expiration then date, which we compared in the product um, uh, against the current date, right? So this user doesn't have a license and he was expired last year, so he's not valid and the product will not uh, allow him to, to be used. And that's, that's for existing users, right? But if there is a new user who just installed the product, you know, this module, this search will return zero rows because, you know, the email is not on the list. So we will go and create, create a user in that spreadsheet. So basically one user means one row and we will, you know, add his first team date, his trial expiration date, his license start date, if he's paid, but most likely not, they always start his trial and then they eventually convert if they decide to buy the product. And then based on these dates, you know, we calculate these statuses, but at the end of the day, the calculation is simple. It's just array formula running, you know, in the first row and it's inherited into all the rows in the spreadsheet and it's returning the statuses based on calculating the dates in all these columns. So, you know, this is how we handle uh, the licensing and, and decision process behind, uh, behind uh, user management. And there's one more thing, uh, when the user is new, we also want to send them welcome instructions because those products are kind of specific and, you know, there's stuff you should know before you actually start playing with it, otherwise it, it's gonna fail or you are gonna fail during your first upload or download. So we send a welcome email and again, it's done with make. So when I go to the diagram, you know, we have one welcome email, which is specific to the, to the uploader product and one which is specific to the downloader. So when I open up the email, you know, it's basically a static string with some HTML uh, text 
But at the end of the day, the email is very simple and I can show you a, a sample here, how it looks. Uh, few seconds. And you know, the moment you install the product, you are getting this, this email with the subject. And you know, if you get read this before, you will probably read it. So the open rate is probably pretty good. And we explain you what you should do here, uh, what you should read, you know, before you are to start actually using the product. And again, you know, it, it's all down through make. Uh, we don't really need any fancy emailing solutions. We decided to go with, with Zoho, as you could saw here, because we simply did not want to pay for any Microsoft paid accounts, which would allow us to run those emails from custom domain or for G Suite account. So we just went with Zoho, which allows you to do it for free with some limitations, but uh, it's livable. So, this is how we, you know, handle new users and how we handle existing users and how we, you know, are passing the statuses back to the product. So the product knows whether the user should be allowed to use it or not. So, uh, we basically saw the first point here. Then when the users are actually using the product, you know, they can run into failures like, uh, you are uploading um, you are uploading this sim simple table and you you think that this table still exists in BigQuery, but there is a colleague who deleted a table and the upload will result in failure. And you should know that, right? Because you want to have your data in order. And for that, you know, we introduced a feature which allows you to subscribe to failure emails. Kind of like, you know, when you run scenario in Make and it fails, you get an email which is fancy looking. In our case, it's kind of ugly, but it does the job. And so in our case, um, when you are setting up upload schedule, you know, you can opt in for failure emails. And, you know, one would think that again, it's some kind of like fancy solution, but at the end of the day, it's super simple. Uh, there is a scenario listening for failure webhooks so basically the product knows when it fails, right? And then when this happens, uh, the failure is pushed to make again. Oops, I did not mean to open this one. I meant this one. So the trailer is pushed to a webhook URL for make. And then we take that information along with some uh, metadata and we, we push it to the user and we send it to the user via email. So when we look at sample payload, you know, here we have a user which failed. This was the fail message and this was his sheet ID. And we basically know whether it was uploader or downloader. If it's uploader, you know, as in this case, we would go and send out this email, which is fairly simple. It's, uh, it's again, it's strings with few HTML tags and the user is notified that failure happened and he should do something about it. If you want to look at the failure email example, how it looks in your Gmail. This is it. So, you know, we just say, hey, oh no, your upload to Bitcoin failed. You know, if it was download the other product, we would say, oh no, your download has failed. But then at the end of the day, this message would be pretty much the same. You just swap, you know, upload for download and that's it. So, you know, that's how we keep users in the know. And again, it's all just based on webhooks and nothing too complicated, but, you know, it has great value for the users because they know when something fails and they know that they should go and look at it. Okay. So let's now talk about expiration emails. So as with every software product, you know, there is likely some trial period license period, and you, you want to know your, you, you want to let your new users know when their trial is expiring, when their license is expiring, when the trial is actually expired and when the license is expired. And again, it's all kind of managed through our fake license server, which is this, uh, this Google sheet. So not only we store the dates for trials and licenses, uh, we also store uh, various timestamps for uh, when we send which emails, right? So when we, for example, send welcome instruction to the new user, which I showed you previously, we send a timestamp here. 
uh, you know, when we send our expiring, we, we save it here, expired here, license expiring here, and license expired here. How do we know when to send the emails? Well, it's simple. So here we have uh, a column which is calculating, again, very simple formula, how many days to trial expiration the given user has. And if the number is five, that's a threshold for us. And every night, you know, we will go and check this column for number five and all the users which have number five here will get an email saying, hey, your trial is about to expire. Maybe you should consider buying a license. And the same we do for license expiration, right? So if he has paid us in the past, but his uh, license is nearing uh, expiration, then five days before the expiration, we will send him an email. And that scenario, which is responsible for managing this, is again, kind of simple. So we do again run this for the both products, right? So we, we run this for uploader and then we will run this for downloader and the downloader sheet has the exactly same column set. So we can just iterate through the sheets like, uh, like in this scenario. So I have a simple configuration variables here like spreadsheet ID and then sheets array with sheet names. And then I simply go and iterate through sheet names uh, I also decide whether the product is downloader or uploader. Uh, I set uh, official product names and official like actions, whether it's, you know, the word, the verb, the action verb is like download or upload. And then I go and compile emails dynamically. So I send an email, as I said, for trials, which are about to expire soon for trials, which just expired and same for licenses. So when we open up, this, this email, we can see that, you know, I'm dynamically replacing product name here, 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 the action word. So whether it's a download or upload, but at the end of the day, you know, the email is exactly the same for the two products. And we just replace a few variables uh, based on the iterations, which, which based on the iteration, which is currently running. So when we check out a real email and how it looks, you know, it looks again, pretty okay. No fancy images, just text and uh, it does the job. So, hey, you know, your trial will expire in five days and this is dynamically inserted based on the product the, the user is using. Same here, you know, and this verb is also dynamically um, replace again based on the product. If this was about downloader, it would be, you know, BigQuery downloader and this would say download. Okay, so now we are kind of halfway through. So, you know, we solved onboarding, licensing, some failure emails when problems arise and expiration, basically the, the main part of communication of the product is now done. And as I said, you know, it, it's costing us pretty much zero. All is based on webhooks, free emailing provider, you know, and Google Sheet. So maybe we can now uh, let you ask few questions if you have any, because I don't want to be talking like for 60 minutes straight and you, you could uh, forget your questions if you have any. If you don't, then we just move forward. I check it here on the chat, seems everything fine. So guys, this is the moment. If you have any question, um, there is one. How, to, how do you handle oath? Okay, so the product itself needs to go through certification with Google. So this is not done in make. And you know, when you, when you publish an add-on like this, uh, you kind of do it through Cloud Console. And then you ask Google to review your product. You know, you have to record a video. And then finally, after many, many attempts and many rejections from Google, you will succeed. And they will grant you the all screen, et cetera, and public will be able to use the product. But this is really happening, you know, in the Google environment and there is nothing, nothing make can do there. Oh, for, I mean, you, you don't have to, like th there is, I mean, that, that webhook is unique. So we are just bringing it straight from the product and there is 
no uh, no sort of like authentication going on because it's only us who, who knows the exact URL. And you know, even if the URL leaked, we can just replace it like in five minutes and everything would be fine. So there is nothing too complicated behind that part. And we, we've been there, like we had to replace those webhooks. So, you know, you go to Mac and replace the webhook in five scenarios and if you go. Um, okay, how often the license check happen? So, of course, this was our first question, right? How many operations are we gonna burn per month by doing these pings, like these never ending pings? And in, in our case, it's, it's, uh, it's burning about 20,000 operations per month because we don't have that many active users. Yes, we onboard users, but the trial expires and then they don't pay, right? So there, there is no more pings. Uh, when you go to the web store, you will, for example, see that the uploader product is like 100,000 users. But basically, that's a lie because whenever you add the product into your organization, Google will count all users in your organization, but nobody's actually using it except one person. So the numbers you see in that store are invalid, basically. And in our case, you know, we were worried and, you know, we are averaging about 20K per month. If we had more users, it would be fine because we would likely be making more money and we would, you know, we would just afford to pay more for May. So there would be like this basically perfectly proportional relationship to the usage, to sales and to, to the cost generated in May. So uh, it's not really an issue. Uh, if it was an issue, we could still probably add it up for product. So it only checks for the license validity every day and not during every upload, for example. So th th there is some things you can tweak on the product side. All right, any more questions? If not, then I guess we can move on. So now I think that's, that's gonna be the coolest scenario. And uh, it's about license purchase, right? Because people want to get paid. <laughs> that's the D-Day for us when, somebody, when finally somebody pays us. And uh, when people pay you, they kind of expect to get an invoice, right? Because they have to give it to their finance. So everyone is happy. So in the product, you know, the way how it works is that currently I, I have a license, so I'm not expired. So I have like no uh, messaging here, but I can still buy another license if I wanted to. So if I go to license status uh, menu, there is a buy button. If it loads. Yeah. And when I click it, I'll be taken to our site. And uh, there is some explanation like if you want to buy multiple, then contact us directly and we will give you some discount. But it doesn't matter. Most of the time, users will either buy one user one year or one user two years. Right. And when they click, when they make a decision, they click. They are taken to Stripe landing page. So let's go there. So this is no longer hosted on our site. It's basically Stripe URL. You can generate it in Stripe for free. Uh, it's called payment links. So you just set up a product price and it will generate a URL for you. And then you take that URL and you place it to your website. And of course, you know, people come here, they fill it out and they pay. And since we are in Make, we all, I guess, know that we are supporting Stripe integration. So we can listen for Stripe events, you know, and take actions based on those events. So when I open my scenario for purchases, this is what's happening. So at first, you know, I get a notification about the, about the payment. I basically send a simple email to myself saying, hey, there is something happening in Stripe because the payment can fail. And maybe you want to reach out to your customers if the payment is failing and help them out or offer a different payment method like PayPal or something. 
then I generate the invoice. And then, you know, I need to update my licensing sheet. I need to find that user and assign him this license, which means uh, I need to, you know, uh, update these, these license related columns here. And also I want to keep track of all my sales. So I will just add a line item to my, uh, to my uh, Google sheet. So let's, let's look at it in more details. So whenever payment comes from Stripe, you can basically subscribe to various uh, Stripe events. And one of them is obviously payments. Uh, then, as I said, you know, I sent, you know, like simple email to myself and I uh, basically, hey, this, I, I say this customer, this email is trying to pay and make sure the payment goes through. So, you know, then, when the payment goes through, I get billing details of the customer for the invoice. I get line items of the payment link by making custom API calls. And then I'm starting setting important variables like invoice number, which is basically uh, now function formatted to this format. So again, nothing too fancy. Uh, then I get customer email from Stripe, customer name from Stripe, uh, license start date, right? So that's today's date because the customer paid today. Uh, the period is always year, duration. It depends on the payment link. So either it's one year or so two years, but it comes from Stripe because that product, you know, I basically sell two products. One is one year, one user, and the other is one user, two years. Then obviously price, uh, you need to divide the price by 100 because the price from the API is multiplied by 100 and that's it. And now the cool part. So. You will think that when you get an invoice from me, it might be probably generated by QuickBooks or by accounting software, but no, uh, because we are so cheap, we don't wanna pay for that, right? So we created a simple template in Google Docs, which I'm gonna show you now. So we created this template with my you know, business details and then with many placeholders, which are replaced in Google Sheets, uh, sorry, in, in Make. So we have the invoice number, right? That's the variable which I was setting. Then we have all the customer details, which I was setting in those variables. Then the product name, then price currency, price currency, etc. And this is how the invoice looks. In Make, what's happening is that you can use this module, and I believe this is so underrated and underutilized module, like you should all be probably using it in your workflows. You can use this create a document from template where you basically replace those placeholder values with real values, which are coming from preceding modules. So all those variables, you know, all those placeholders, which I have here, I am replacing those placeholders with real values from the preceding modules. And when this runs, you know, this, this module will return a new document on your drive. And then I go and take that document and I download it as PDF. I store that document into my invoice folder on Google Drive. And then I delete uh, that newly created document that Google Docs format because I don't really need to be storing the documents itself. I just need those PDF invoices, which I have already stored into Google Drive. And when I'm done with you know, creating the invoice, I just mail it to the customer. And I say, hey, this is your invoice, find a text, blah, blah, blah. And this is how, this is how the, how the email looks. Okay, let me quickly open it for you. So you can imagine. So this is the email and we say, you know, make sure your license is active. We give you some basic instructions. We also tell you where to download the products. And then here is invoice attached with, you know, all these uh, placeholder, placeholder values replaced. And the customer is happy that he got his invoice, right? But the scenario doesn't end there. Uh, as I said, we also need to update our license status. So. What we do here is we, 
we need to start iterating because when you pay us for one product, it automatically grants you license for both, right? So if you buy a downloader, you still get license even for uploader. So that's why I kind of run this twice from now on. And I go and search for that email which purchased, right? And if I don't see that purchaser email, I edit as a new user because you know I don't know this person. So it will be a new row starting in the spreadsheet, but he will also have license start date and his status will be you know okay license from the first day and it will not be trial. And uh, if it's an if it's an existing user, I will simply just update that user. You know I will update that row number with uh, filling out his. Um, license uh, information here. So this status again can be properly calculated. And then, uh, as I said, I want to also keep track of my sales. So within my licensing database, AKA Google Sheet, I have this order tracker where basically I add all the, all the, all the orders and you know every order is one new row and I just keep track of everything. And I pull up whether you know the customer is use, was starting on the uploader product or downloader, so I kind of know what's what's driving the acquisition because sometimes you know the the flow of the customer is weird, like they start on one product but they buy buy through another one, etc. It's just it's really weird. So you know I'm just storing this for future analysis if I ever need to to run it. And this is what. Uh, what this part of the scenario is doing. Okay, I think since this was the most complicated scenario, maybe we can leave some time for questions here if you have any, and if not, we'll just move on. So if you wanna ask, please ask now. No questions, so I guess everything is super clear. <laughs> You are a great teacher. <laughs> okay, let's go. Uh, so, you know, now we solved the installation licenses, usage failures, expiration emails. We have our money, right, in the bank account. But what can sometimes happen, and I do see that quite often, is that the person who is purchasing the license is not the actual user who is going to be using the license. And so at the beginning, you know, we were seeing payments coming through. And then five minutes later, we got an email from the customer saying, hey, I paid it with this email. It got the license, it's fine, but I need the license to be assigned to a different user because I'm just like finance person who paid it, right, with my card. And so in that case, you know, I would go to the licensing sheet and then I would start my like manual routine and I would find the purchaser remove the row and put his license dates to that actual user, which is which used to exist, you know, most of the cases. And then, you know, when this happened like 20 times, I was like tired and, and I was thinking how to automate it with, uh, with Make. And of course, it's not that difficult. You just have to put some time into it. And this is what I did. So basically, when you get the license, sorry, when you get the invoice email, we also say, you, hey, if you need to assign the license to a different user, you can do it via this form. And it's a simple Google form. And it just asks for two things, right? You need to provide your current email, which has the license assigned. And then you need to provide the new holder of the license, basically the future one. And then you submit, and voila, I have a scenario listening for these submits. And it's processing these requests again, fully automatically. So we can look at the scenario. And basically I'm, I'm getting notified to a webhook, which I know is not like the default, default behavior of Google Forms, but basically once the user submits, there's like click here to make it faster because this, uh, this is triggered by that click. And so this webhook comes, you know, uh, I list all the requests for recent changes. 
Uh, of course, it's all stored in my license database here, all the submits, right? So all these fake submits are from me. And, you know, if there is a value which does not have yes in the already process column, it means I should process it. So I would, if this yes was not here, I would get this row and I would find this user in the licensing spreadsheet. And then I would assign the license to this new user in both licensing spreadsheets. And it's all done through this scenario. And again, we have to keep in mind that, you know, if user is, for example, only using uploader, he also has the license for downloader. So again, we need to iterate through both products. So through both spreadsheets in my, uh, in my scenarios. So as we already saw, you know, I provide spreadsheet ID and then the sheet names. And then I look for the purchaser on the license sheet. And again, once for uploader, once for downloader. And sometimes, you know, it can happen that, you know, people enter wrong email. So they will get a fail notification saying, hey, you like you try to, um, you try to transfer the license, but we don't see this source email in our database. And then user replies to us and say, oh, sorry, I made a mistake. And they go again through the form and they submit it correctly. And then, you know, in that case, it goes through this route where we find the purchaser and he exists or she exists. But we also need to check whether that target email already exists, right? Because if that user is not existing, we need to add it as a new customer. Like we need to add that new user as a new customer and send confirmation email to all the people involved. So the email goes to the requester of the change, to the new holder and to me, so I know something is happening. And if the target uh, customer already exists, you know, we are not adding it as a new user, but we are just updating uh, his, his dates in, in license columns, right? So if, the, if this user was to be assigned a license from transfer, he would get the dates here. Okay, we got this user uh, as I was talking because you were not supposed to see it. So if this user, for example, got the license from transfer, his dates would be filled out here and uh, his status would change to okay license. But there's one more step. So now we are in the stage where that target user has his, has his license or her license, but we also need to remove the license from the requester, right? Because uh, you, you don't want to have two users with the same license. You want to always have just one user with one license they paid for. So as a final step, we remove the license from the purchaser. So we go and look for that email who, is, who has requested a change. We find the email and we wipe basically his license columns and he will likely go to expired trial mode. All right, so this is how we manage transfers of uh, licenses and in the final stages you know when we are done with all this basically day to day we also want to see you know how our user accounts are trending like how many users did we get yesterday what were their emails uh was the time series of user accounts and for that you know we need to do some uh some crawling so when you go to the marketplace you actually see that Google is counting the users for you. And as I said, this, this number is kind of a lie, but it's some sort of an indicator and you, know, you should be likely collecting it. So you know, obviously we wanted to write a scraper which would come here every day and get this number and store it somewhere. But then we realized this can also be done through Make. Like you don't have to you know, set up your own server to do this. And so I built a scenario for that. So let's look at it. The scenario is kind of simple. These are all disabled, so we don't have to look at those. But uh, when I run this once, you know, this, this is my configuration JSON. And basically I'm saying, hey, for the product which is uploader, go to this URL and grab that number. And for product which is downloadable, go to this different URL and grab the number. And so, you know, I use simple HTTP make a request module. 
I input that the URL from the positioning module. Uh, I basically load the page in HTML and then I run our text parser module, which is very basic and I'm not text parser or regex guru by any means. So this, this, uh, this regex is regex could be significantly improved, I assume. This kind of gives me the number, but I, st I still have to do some cleaning. So I remove some special characters and get the actual number. And when I have the number, I add it to my Google sheet again, uh, to my user account sheet, which is very simple. But I basically keep the time series of all the snapshots we've done for the past, I don't know how many years, three years now, three and a half. And so every day I, I get two euros with the snapshots uh, from that app store. And I know, you know, how my user accounts are trending. Obviously this is super basic. We then later take this data and push it to BigQuery, of course, with our uploader. And then we make like dashboards and we add more data like from Google Analytics to see the trends and how how the usage uh, is trending as well. But this is the basic, you know, um, the basic number we look at when we look at user counts. Obviously you see the downloader, it is only 76, seven users because uh, it's pretty new. And clearly we have not got any big fake organization which would inflate our number. Okay, so that's, that's one thing. So, you know, web crawling for simple stuff, also possible to make, not that complicated. If you know regex a little bit, even if you don't, you will probably be able to get it with our, uh, with our text functions and doing some replacements. And the final scenario, which was deployed for this product, uh, let me close some windows because I am getting low system resources messages here. So, let me get rid of some stuff which we don't need anymore. Okay, can you still hear me okay, Mayara? Or is it kind of shaking? Dan, sorry, yeah. I didn't. Can you hear me okay, guys? Like, or is it kind of shaking? No, it's okay. Okay, because my PC is acting now. <clears throat> Let me just close as many windows as I can. Come on. Okay, almost there. Oh, this is so slow. Okay. Good. Uh, the final scenario, which I want to talk about, is one where we are interested in seeing which exact emails, aka users, we got yesterday. Right? Because if we see a big company, it's possible that they will want to buy multiple licenses in two weeks or in a month. As opposed to if we see at gmail.com, it's very likely that this user is not going to convert, meaning paying us you know, when his trial expires. And for that, we have very simple scenario, which is basically just going to my license sheet and it's looking at the timestamp column, like first team date, which we had there. And it basically is listing just users which have timestamp from yesterday. And then the scenario is sending me an email, you know, listing all, the, all those users and say, look, you got these five users yesterday or these 10 or even zero, like, of course, you don't always get new users every day. And the scenario for that, it's super simple. You know, it's just uh, search Google Sheets. 
based on the condition with the daytime and send it via email. Okay, I really don't know what's going on here because I don't have anything open literally and it's still so slow. Well, let's just wait for it to load. Okay, so, you know, every morning or five minutes after midnight, we basically go to our spreadsheet, we check the license sheet for uploader, for downloader, we list those emails, we aggregate them into text, and then we send an email to, to myself or I send the email to myself. And the email is very simple. Uh, it's plain text again. And hopefully this will load. Don't feel alone. I'm here with you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's terrible when it's loading like this. No, this is my PC. I, it's not Make or Gmail. It would be slow, but I don't know what I should close now because there's nothing, literally nothing running in my PC. Just this. <laughs> Anyway, uh, we are almost there and it's good. It's kind of the last scenario I wanted to show you guys. So <laughs> it would be worse if this uh, happened at the beginning. Maybe you can start preparing your questions because I'm about to be done like in 30 seconds here. So if you have any questions about anything you saw today, you can just start posting it. Yeah, so you know, every month, every every midnight, you know, I get this, I get the emails, and I kind of know, you know, what's coming in two weeks, like how many sales there will be. Usually, not that many. Like I'm gonna be honest with you, uh, but it, it it gives me good idea, you know. And sometimes, if you see a big company name in in the in the email, you may reach out to them. Hey, if you want any support or any special treatment. Let us know. We are more than happy to help you, etc. And that's really it. So by you know having these what six, seven scenarios in Make, you know we totally outsource all the businesses, all the business processes to Make. The core feature was of course coded by developer, but everything else it was done by Make. It's still done. So I guess you may have one question, right? So what do we do like to keep the product alive right now? Well, nothing, like we literally do nothing. <laughs> we just wait for the users to come uh, and maybe, you know, we randomly reply to questions. If people have like support questions, of course we reply, but when it comes to day-to-day -day management, we don't really do anything. We just, you know, sit here and relax. And of course, big credit goes to make. Um, Daniel, I would like to make to ask you something. This is like a, up to me. Uh, how many how, how many hours do you think you are saving on work? Because on, on this, well, so obviously the licensing part, you would have to solve it in automated fashion anyway, right? So there's no choice. You would have to code it, and then it would run on its own on your server somewhere else, or in Google Cloud, or I don't know, on DigitalOcean. It really doesn't matter, but you would still have to code it. So there would be like direct cost if you did not have developer on your team. But for like the invoicing, uh, these license transfers, the reporting, you know, if I had to do this manually, of course, it would be hours per week probably. And all the errors I would make, you know, by taking the data from somewhere and copying and rewriting it, etc. Like I cannot even imagine how many errors that would be. So. I would not be even concerned about that time, but the errors which you would do by doing this manually. But you know, doing this manually, it's simply no option. Like you would have to figure it out somehow. And with Make, you know, it was the fastest solution. And you know, back then when I was building these scenarios, I was still kind of like newbie to to Make slash Integromat. So it took me some, it took me a while. But now, you know, when I know how to do it, you know, it would take me maybe a day or two to kind of like test it and be sure that it's going to work to cover all these areas of business operations. 
That's nice. Thank you. Uh, I was asking because what I have seen is like, a, this is something that is completely automated and you can put it to run like, a, this is what, exactly what you were saying. Right now, you don't have, let's say, sweet nothing to do with it. Only when you, yeah. have, only when you need to react to someone. Yeah, exactly. But, like you don't have a one active work to do something so it's like yeah, a, you can it's have auto, like a it's yeah yeah it's like autopilot so the same idea that you have with the license you we can build like a other solutions and put into run and make them work for you and not you working for them yeah of course just have to have a idea what's to automate <laughs> yeah uh, do we have some more questions? No, I don't see any. So yeah, if there are there. no questions, then I guess we can call it at and seven minutes early for once. <laughs> wow. Usually we are getting a little bit later. <laughs> yeah. Uh, thank you everyone to, to attend this webinar. It was record. It will be also posted on the partner portal. So if you would like to see it again, feel free to reach out to me. I will be probably publishing it next week. So see you on the next session of webinars. Daniel, thank you so much one more time uh, for all the knowledge that you are sharing with us. And thank you guys. See you soon. Have a great day. Thanks for coming, guys. And come for the next one. Bye. Bye.